I shall stand. I shall know him. I shall know oh, him by the prince of the nails in his hands. This song was written by a blind woman. A blind woman that could not see like you and I see. She could only see with the spiritual eyes. And she says that she will know the Lord. She will see the Lord with her eyes. It's so interesting that so many of us, we have eyes we can see, but we can't see. Hallelujah. Fanny Crosby says, I shall know him. I shall know the Lord. I shall know him by the prince of the nails in his hands. Is that what you and I are also saying today? Is that what we are looking forward to? Because so many people talk about vision. And whenever we talk about vision, we are talking about material things. When you hear men of God, pastors, talking about vision, they are talking about what? Material things. One would think that for once, they, when they talk about vision, they talk about knowing Christ and being able to see him on that day when you and I leave this world. Because we may have all the material things in this world and die and be miserable. The true vision yes. is knowing Christ. Amen. Amen. And for Fanny Crosby, she said, I shall know him by the prince of the nail scar in his hand. Is that your vision? Because if that is your vision, then all other things shall be added. Jesus Christ says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his what? Righteousness. And those who have true vision, that is what they seek. Hallelujah. Those who have true vision, that is what God, they seek. For them, the things of this world grow strangely dim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Fanny Crosby had that vision. What is your vision? Hallelujah. What is your vision? Has somebody told you you don't have a vision because you don't have a private aeroplane? Because you don't have a house, because you don't have a car, has somebody told you that? They're telling you have a vision, and your vision is not the things of this world. Your vision is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Your vision, your vision is to one day be able to see His nail scarred hand and to hold Him. He told Philip, "He says, no, uh, what is his name?" Um, the doubting Thomas. He said, Thomas, this is my hand. Put your finger in. Hello? Amen. Fanny Crosby said, I shall know him. How about you? I shall know him. Hallelujah. I shall know him by the prints of the nails in his hands. I pray that that will be your vision and my vision. Amen? In these last days, in these dangerous times, if you have a different vision, change it. Let your vision be Christ and Him crucified. Amen. And when you are occupied with that, all other things the Lord will take care of. Amen. 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 And I'm not saying don't go to work. <laughs> go to work, but having Christ as your work, vision. Because He says, everything you do, do it as unto what? The Lord. The Lord. I don't see, I'm not saying don't go to school. Go to school, but have Christ as your vision. And as you steady, steady as unto who? The Lord, because you want Christ to be glorified through your success. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let Jesus be your vision. Let him be your vision. We've been studying the book of Revelation, and I want to revisit it because we've taken a long break of it. We broke off from chapter 8, and today we are in chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9, and please let us all be very attentive 
because this is God's word, God's truth, and we have to know it, especially in this last days, we have to know the truth. I was on, uh, asked the pastor um, this past Friday, and somebody called and asked a question, wanted to know which one is, is it uh, pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, uh, post-tribulation. So men have established their own doctrines. Pre-tribulation, that is, those Jesus Christ coming before tribulation, or mid-tribulation, Jesus coming in the midst of that tribulation to take us, or post-tribulation. It depends on which church you go. And some have a firm doctrine on that. But one thing Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew, which trashes all of that, Jesus said, be ye ready. And that should be what you occupy us. He said, be ye ready because you don't know what day and time the Son of Man cometh. Jesus even said, he himself doesn't know the time is coming. He said, the angels don't know. It is only God the Father. So why should Pastor Pimple establish something? And then we go into the book of Revelation and we say at chapter 4, that is where the church is taken away from the earth. I say, what, what, where do you see that from? Where? Where does it say that? You know, we, we talk about the power of God. We talk about all that, but we are afraid. If you and I believe in this, the, 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 the testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yeah. then we know that we have a God who even when fire is raging around you and yes. I, he yes. is Hallelujah. able to keep that fire from yes. burning you, even yes. though you're walking through. Yes. Yes. If we believe in the testimony of Daniel, in the lion's den, mm. lions that have been starved for many days, mm. and yet they would not have any appetite for Daniel. <laughs> If we preach those messages, why should we be afraid of tribulation? Hallelujah. Why should we be afraid of what? Tribulation. God is able to deliver us. He is able in every situation. There has been accidents where you have children of God coming out of the accident unscathed. That does not mean that those who were escaped are sinners. But I'm just saying that God is able yes. in the midst of great trials to preserve his own. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the God I serve. Amen. I don't serve the God who is um, can do some things and cannot do other things. <laughs> and so they say, oh, I don't want to be here through the tribulation. I don't want, if you want to be here, stay here. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew 24, he said, soon after the great tribulation, then the Son of Man will do what? Come. Matthew 24, that was what Jesus said. He said, soon after what? Soon after what? The tribulation. Soon after. He didn't say before. He didn't say me. He said, soon after. That's what Jesus Christ said. I will believe Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Revelation chapter 9. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, a star. An angel came from heaven, and he was given a key to the bottomless pit. It is a pit with no bottom. So when you go in, you keep on sinking, sinking, sinking. I know you are all saints. You've never had that kind of dream before. I am the only one who have had that kind of dream. The dream where you find yourself sinking and sinking and sinking. I don't know whether you're about. You, you're all so holy. You've never had that. You know, you've never had that dream where you, you all of us, it's like somebody is pursuing you, is chasing you, and you keep on running, and you say, okay, you are running to nowhere. You keep on running, but you are not moving forward. It's like the person just almost about to run. Bottomless feet. This angel has a key to open the bottomless feet. 
and there is something going to happen. Why is the book of Revelation here for us? It is for you it is to be a guide for you and I. It is to keep you and I focused, knowing that we cannot turn to the left or turn to the right. Because any misstep will miss the mark. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is here for us. That's why the Bible says in, in Revelation, it opens up and says, Blessed are those who read and keep the words of this book. Blessed are those who do what? Read. But you know that that is the one book that so many people don't want to read. They say, oh, I, I'm afraid of the things that are inside there. That is the one that many also don't preach. And even when they are preaching, they misinterpret it. They may teach it and sometimes they skip certain portions. But God wants us to know all of it. There is a tribulation coming. Yes. There is a great tribulation coming. Yeah. And it's not going to be pretty. Hallelujah. It's not going to be what? Pretty. But for those of us who have yielded and surrendered our whole life to Jesus Christ, in the midst of that tribulation, he's able to preserve us. Amen. He's able to preserve us. Yes. He's able to keep us all scathed. Yes. He's able to. How do I know that? Let's read on. He said, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Can you imagine that? Something that has never happened before. Smoke darkening the sun, the stars, the moon. So it's going to be pitch black. Hallelujah. When the sun ceases it to shine, it's a kind of darkness, smoke that the rays of the sun cannot penetrate. The last time, or the first time I experienced that kind of darkness, is when I went to a place in Ghana called in Tampo. That was in the 70s. We got to that place, we arrived around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. And when we got down, it was a, a, one of these army trucks that we hitchhiked, took us all the way there. We were going to do crusade over there. When we got down that dark, now we are walking to the village. You couldn't see the person next in front of you. It was so dark. So what happens if there was a cobra crossing and you step on it? It was so dark. But the Lord carried us safely. That's the first time I saw that kind of pitch. And this darkness, I believe, is going to be even darker. Because with that darkness, if there were moonlight, it would have come. And here he says, he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts, locusts, locusts. How many of us know locusts? In, 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 in the Ghan language, it's, we call it agan. It is a type of agan, big one. And these agans, or these locusts, they come in mass. They come in mass. And they come on your farm, on your garden, settle on the green vegetation and eat everything. By the time they leave, oh man, it's like somebody took an, uh, what do you call it, uh, a, a, a lawnmower and just went through. And God is releasing locust upon the earth. God is releasing. Who gave the key to the angel? It's God. Give him. And he opens. And, then, and unto them was given power as the powers of the of scorpion, of the power of scorpions of the earth, uh, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Locusts that eat green vegetation suddenly are going to act like scorpions. How many of us have seen a scorpion before? And how many have been stung by a scorpion? Oh, you were stung by a scorpion? Hey. What? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this locusts are going to have 
the power of a scorpion. To stink. To stink. You know, that is when the period of grace seems to be running what? Out. Now we have the grace of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not die but have everlasting what? The period of grace. The time to know the Lord Jesus Christ is now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The time to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior is now. <laughs> the time to be transformed from that life that you live, the lifestyle, is now. Amen. You know, it's, it doesn't help to be playing hide and seek with God. It doesn't help. Because one day, you will wish you hadn't played hide and seek. You know how we play hide and seek with God? We pretend before men that we know the Lord and yet we know that we don't know the Lord. The things we do in the secret, thinking that we are hiding from God. I heard a pastor's wife made a statement and she was saying, say, my husband does not speak, does, does not denounce me before uh, our children. That he doesn't speak harshly, doesn't, and I asked myself, okay, does it? But does he do it absent away from the children? If he does it away from the children, it's still evil. Because it means that before God, because when the two, you and your wife are there arguing, it's before God. So if you feel it is okay to call your wife names or you call your husband names in, away from your children and you think you've done well, no, no, no. Think about that. You are dis disrespecting who? God also. So you don't do it in front of your children. And you don't do it away from what? Your children. Because away from your children, God is your witness. So when you keep on talking like that, please, no. Both of them are bad. Don't, don't disparage your wife or your, your husband before your children or outside of what? Your children. Because outside, God sees you. With them, God also sees you as well. Hello? Amen. Hello? So let's... That hide and seek, let's stop playing that hide and seek. Because God sees you. Listen to what verse 4 says. It was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Now, locals are supposed to eat grass. They are supposed to eat grass. But God tells them that this time is not grass. I'm going to give you some succulent food. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> it was commanded them they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads hello only those men who have not what now if he has referred that specific it means that there should be men with the seal of God on their foreheads because if they were if they, if they weren't there, there will be no need for him to say with those without the seal of God. Or you say that the men that you are there just by saying those men without what the seal. In the book of Ephesians, chapter one, it says, When we believe, verse 13, it says, Whom after you have believed, he sealed you with the Holy Spirit of what yeah. promise. The Holy Spirit of God is our seal, the guarantee of our purchase, of the purchase possession of, all, of God. It's a seal. That's why it is important for you and I to make sure that we have the Spirit of God in us. Because the Bible tells us clearly, Romans chapter 8, verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. John chapter 1, verse 12, and those who believe to them gave he what? Power to become what? sons of God. The Holy Spirit of God. He is our seal. So when you give an act to Christ, he seals you with the Holy Spirit. And it is that Holy Spirit on that day of tribulation, that mark that you have is keep, going to keep the adversary away. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, so you see that there is no need for you and I to be afraid. Amen. Of tribulation. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid. 
He says, he tells them, be sure that you only, only touch those men who don't have the seal of God in their what? Foreheads. And those who don't have the seal of God are those who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Those who have rejected him. Those who have rejected him. And he says, and to them it was given that they should not kill them. Watch. They should not do what? Kill them. He didn't say that they should not inflict pain. Don't kill them. Please, let's pay attention. It is important. Because I know some of us, this is the first time we have noticed this. Because we've been afraid. We don't want to read it. But it is there. It is real. It is real. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented. How many months? Five months. Torment. Five what? Months. Can you imagine? Locus. Having the power of a scorpion. And I don't know the frequency of the torment each day. If it is breakfast, lunch, dinner, we don't know. But for five months, we don't know the sequence of it. If it's going to be every second, every minute, we don't know. But all we know that they are going to inflict severe pain, torment, torture. Hallelujah. Torment. And he says, they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. A scorpion when he strikes a man. Oh, it's, I thought God is, God is, God is love. Oh yes, God is love. That is why tribulation has not yet started. Because he is giving us time. To change. Yes. He's giving us time to repent and to surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. But we keep on pushing, postponing, pushing, postponing. The very day you decide, you to, then here comes a phone call. Hey. Uh, that's your girlfriend. I love you, honey. And then you change your mind. And then she says, can we meet at the hotel, the motel, or I'm coming over? And then you say, okay, can we come over? So you keep on pushing it. Satan knows. Satan knows. And he wants to keep you postponing, 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 postponing. Please, if you are in that group of people who have been postponing, Please stop postponing. Today you see the truth of what is going to happen. Yes. Don't postpone anymore. Surrender. Yield to Jesus Christ. You will lose nothing but the things that you don't need. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. When you yield your all to Christ, the only thing you lose are the things that are not helpful to you. Yes. You lose them. It will cost you your girlfriend also. It will cost you your boyfriend also because they are hindrances to your work with God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And in those days, verse 6, that is the most dangerous one. Look at verse 6. Now we run away from death. When they say, oh, I reject it. I reject it. I rebuke it. I cast it out. We are rejecting and kicking death everywhere. And here we see we are going to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. But watch what verse 6 is saying. In those days shall men seek what? Shall men seek what? Shall men seek what? The pain is going to be so severe that you wish you were dead. But death will run away from you. Hallelujah. Death will do what? Run away from you. You take a pistol and you put it on your head. And the pistol is there. 
Hey, my friend, I can't shoot. <laughs> oh, you may shoot yourself, but you will not die. The pain will be there. You feel the pain, but you will not die. In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee. Death will do what? Flee from you. Billy, we call it Billy. Oh, how do you call it never? <laughs> Hallelujah. Death will flee. Does death will do what? Flee. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses. Prepared unto battle. Can you imagine the shape of the locust? I know the size of a locust to be very, very small. But these locusts are going to be giant locusts. <laughs> giant what? Locusts. Like horses. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like what? Gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. Even their very appearance, their very sight, even sense fear. You know, shivers through your spine. Very scary. Very scary. Before even they strike you, you see them you want to run. This is going to happen. This is not a fable. It's going to what? Happen. It's going to happen. There is a day that this is going to happen. But the question that the Lord wants me to ask myself and to ask all of us is, on whose side would you be on on that day when this begins? Would you be on the side of the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you be amongst the redeemed? Would you be amongst those who have the seal of the Holy Spirit of God on your forehead, the seal of God? That is going to serve as a deterrent to this beast, this locust. And they had hair as the hair of women. Can you imagine? They had the face is like a man, the hair is like a woman. That's a hermaphrodite. Man, woman. Locust, man, woman. Mixed with animal. <laughs> it's not fun. Is that right? And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Have you seen a human being with a lion teeth before? You run. Is that right? But they've come ready to inflict wounds on those who heretofore hear the word of God, like this Friday, when the Lord led me to present to them the fact that Jesus is wisdom. He says, wisdom crieth. Wisdom. Jesus is wisdom. He is wisdom. Crieth. And here today, wisdom is still what? Crying. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. Without him, God didn't create the world. God created the world with Jesus. He was the wisdom of God. Yeah. Jesus Christ said, he says, wisdom says, he was, with, he was with the Father. Proverbs chapter 8, I was with the Father. During the creation, I was with him. And he has set me up for everlasting life. Jesus. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. Do you know why they had the breastplate? Because they know that in human being, some of us will go and take uh, uh, Kalash, 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 AK-47, try to shoot them. <laughs> you go and take your AK-47 to shoot them. It will not penetrate because they have a breastplate. They come well protected. Hallelujah. Some will say we're going to use a nuclear weapon to, to we use the word nuke. We're going to nuke them. Try it. The nuke will nuke yourself, but you know that. Hallelujah. 
They had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Wow. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Five months. Five months. You and I cannot stand one second of their head. But it's too many. Five months. Why? Because of God's wrath. God's what? Wrath. God, God waited for so long that you and I will surrender our all to him. But all we did was kept procrastinating because we loved the things of this world more than the things of God. So now the time of grace is over and God's wrath and judgment is in power. And it's so fierce. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so what? Fierce. And they had a king over them. They had a king, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, Lucifer himself, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollai. He is the commanding general. And you know that Satan has never loved you or not. Even those of you who are, those of us who have not given our lives to Christ, and Satan makes sure that you get all you want. You know, Satan is a thief. Everything he gives to you, he stole it. Yes. If he gives you money, he stole it. Gives you a girlfriend, he stole it. <laughs> Everything Satan gives is stolen. Good. But he gives you those things so that to keep your heart and your mind away from Christ. Mm -hmm. That is why the book, the Bible, First John says, Beloved, love not the world, nor the things that there are in the world. Because those who love the things of this world, the love of God is not what in them. It's so clear. No ifs, no what buts. He who loves this world, the love of God is not in him. He says, one war is past. Five months, men are subjected to torment and torture. Men who have, men and women who have not the mark of Christ, the seal of the Holy Spirit on their foreheads. One woe is past. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. The sixth angel now sounds, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, lose the four angels which are bound in the river Euphrates. Remember Euphrates in the Garden of Eden? And here is Euphrates. There are angels bound there, four of them. No human eye can see. But God says they are there. And I believe they are there now. But no human eye sees. There is coming a day that they are going to be loose, released. They are there for a purpose. They are there for a purpose. God is the only great best strategic warrior. He is so strategic in all he does. He makes no mistake. God makes no what? If someone was preaching when I went to Ghana and I know they borrowed it from here. In Genesis chapter 1, there's 1 and 2. And they were talking, say, well, between when, when God created the world, uh, uh, there was something that happened between chapter Verse 1 and 2. And he says, Satan came and messed it. The whole thing was chaotic and everything. Before he said, I said, my friend, where did you get that message from? But people buy into it. That's a lie. In the beginning, God created If God created it, it was without form and without word, and it was void. That's how God made it. God, that's how God made it. He does it step. He did it step by what? Step. Nobody came to mess it up. So please don't believe that lie. Hallelujah. He says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the God. He said, Loose them. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for one hour a day. In essence, in a short 13 months and 
one hour, you were prepared to slay the third part of men, to kill a third, a third. And those third are those without what? Are you going to be among those who be slain? Or you are going to be among those whom the Lord says, touch not my contingency. Hallelujah. It is a third part, a third, a third part, a third will be what? Slay. A third will be slain. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200 thousand thousand two million two hundred million can you imagine it's only god who can command an army like that somebody will ask where do they come from well god knows where they came from hallelujah amen. i'm hallelujah. not going to use amen, amen. amen. hallelujah hallelujah amen. <laughs> hallelujah yeah two hundred what million so you can't run you can't do what run if you don't have the seal of God on your forehead and you want to run, you cannot run. Because where would you run away from 200 million people? 200 million army. You cannot do what? Run. Hallelujah. Amen. And thus, I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and of brimstone. Wow! And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. The heads of what? Lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and what? Brimstone. God is angry. And he is just in being what? angry. Because for many years, he's given us grace. So we can escape this judgment to come. But some of us chose to ignore the clarion call, the warning. Noah in his days cried. And the people didn't listen. And God destroyed this time there are no ways also who are proclaiming the gospel. And people still are hardening their hearts. And there is coming a day when all these things will unfold. How can you run away from a horse with the head of a lion with fire issuing from the mouth? What are you going to run to hide? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we all awake? Are we all awake? Yes. Are we all awake? Yes. Amen. This is the truth. Don't let the enemy put you to sleep. Because he wouldn't want you to hear this. But you and I have to hear it. And to know the truth. This is a reality. It's going to happen. Say, so by these three was the third part of them killed. Of men killed. By the fire. By smoke. By what? Second Peter chapter 3, you see that also there. Second Peter chapter 3, when you go home, read. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, snake. This one, their tails were like what? Snake. The others, their tail had power of scorpion. This one, the tail is like snake. And if you are as inquisitive as Pastor Pimple, and you see that tail, and you just want to go and play with the tail, watch out. Because if you hold the tail, the tail will bite you. If you go in front, the fire will come out of the mouth. And, so where would you hide? Hello? Where would you and I hide? And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold. Idols of what? Today we worship idols of gold to cool. Because we love money more than God. And money has become our idol. 
people buying gold left and right because they are telling you as that very soon all currency is going to be changed. There's going to be uh, Hallelujah. moneyless. There's going to be uh, uh, coinless. This thing is going to be so people are buying gold, buying everything. Buy, that's fine. But there's a day coming when that gold will be useless because it will not save your soul from the judgment to come. What you need to do is to buy the real gold, which is without money. Jesus Christ, the yes. Son of the living yes. God. Let him become your gold. Let him come to live in your heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And the rest of the men which were not killed by this place, yet repented not of the works of their hands, and that they should not worship devils and idols of our gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see, nor hear, nor what? Walk. If you are watching me by YouTube, or by WhatsApp, this is God's word. If you are one who is preoccupied with the worshipping of idols, the idols of gold, the idols of money, the idols, we've made women our idols, we've made men our idols, some of us, our parents, our idols, instead of God. Watch out. Let Jesus Christ be your all in all. Yes. And on this, when this thing happens, you will escape it. Hallelujah. Yes. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, of their fornication, of their fornication. <laughs> Some people say fornication, but it is fornication, not fornication, nor of their fornication. What is fornication? I need to explain it because if i don't satan would not want me to explain it but fornication is when you a young man you are not married to a woman and you jump into bed with that girl you are fornicating Amen. if you a man you are already married and you go and take another woman you are fornicating you are committing adultery with you a woman vice versa all those things they are evil so if you find yourself in it, repent. Turn away from it. Jesus Christ is willing to forgive you now. Amen. He's willing. No, no, you are not beyond. You are not outside of the realm of being forgiven and, and cleansed. You can repent and the Lord will have mercy and do it and forgive you. So you can escape the judgment that is coming. It's going to be a terrible day. It's going to be a terrible day. Very, very terrible. Can you imagine that was the time coming when the Lord will even tell Pastor Pimple, I never knew you. Can you imagine that? Hello? The Bible says in that day, preachers who say, I cast demons in your name. I did this in your name. And the Lord will say, I never what? Knew you. Which means that me, the preacher, have to make sure that I'm walking circumspectly before God. I am not exempted from his judgment. Because the Bible says we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. We shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. There are some pastors who are afraid of the Christians will not come before the, the, the white throne. They've said it's a white throne, black throne, and whatever. They're afraid. Come on. Okay. Let's stop those things. He said we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Let that be. All that you and I need to do is to be ready. After hearing this word, be ready. Make sure that Christ is in your heart. Make sure that he's the Lord of your life. Make sure that you and I have been washed in his blood. Make sure that every passing day, you and I are spending time with him. In fact, the theme for this year is abiding in God's presence. Make sure that every second you are abiding in his presence. In his presence. Whether you are on your work, Wherever you are, make sure that you are sensitive to his word, his presence. Sensitive to his presence. To his presence. And do you know that in the presence of the Lord, there is a gift. There is a beautiful gift. It's in his presence, the fullness of what? Joy. So why would you want to stay away from his presence? Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of what? Joy. And in the presence of the Lord is fullness of righteousness, holiness, purity, peace, truth, all those 
virtues that makes the heart glad that makes your blood rejoice have you seen the blood rejoicing before yes it makes your blood rejoice in the presence of the Lord. in his presence beloved this is what the word of god says you and i are not destined for damnation for destruction granted that we allow the word of God to do what the Lord wants it to do in our lives. It is free. Hello? Amen. It is what? Free. free. Don't say, Pastor, I didn't break my checkbook. So I cannot give my life to Christ because I don't have money to give. It is free. You don't buy it. Salvation is what? Free. free. You don't it's free. The Lord wants to deliver you and I freely from this judgment that is, to, is coming. From this great tribulation. He wants to deliver you and I from it. And today you can let the Lord do it in your life. If you are here today and you don't know this Jesus Christ, you've heard his word. No one, no one is intending to coax you to make any... No, no, no. It is God's word. And if you and I know that there is fire raging from the back room come to engulf us. You will not see the second. In fact, you will j jump over the person sitting next to you and make it to the door before everybody else. Why? Because you want to save your soul. Is that right? 